Welcome to the Sue Esponte podcast. I'm Ken Harper, and today with me is Raymond Gonzalez. So we're just going to talk a little bit about why we want to do this podcast and just what our plan is. So for me, I was in Ranger Battalion from 2010 to 2013. I was, um, I worked for Sergeant Gonzalez or Raymond Gonzalez. And how long were you in Battalion? I was there from... Uh... 03 to 14 in regiment. Okay. And uh, so recently, like we've had a couple guys that we were in battalion with that have committed suicide. And out of like the sadness from both of us, we feel like we want, and we don't know, you know, why that happened, but we have talked to several guys and had different struggles since we've gotten out of battalion. And we just feel like there's a need to, to kind of help others. And so that's, whether it's helping them figure out like their plan beyond battalion or helping them with the struggles they got. And so that's where we are and we're hoping this podcast can help somebody. So like for me, example, like when I got out of the army, my plan was just to go to college and then I'd figure out a job down the road. And it kind of happened. My college degree didn't really do anything for me because I ended up going to get my CDL and becoming a truck driver. And, um, but for me, that was that was kind of a struggle. And so what about you, Sergeant Gonzalez? What is uh, my plan when I got out or just like my, okay, so my, oh, I uh, I got out, I got medically retired and I'm pretty sure further down the line, we can go dive into that a little more for the reasons. But like when I got out, it was very abrupt and it was just like the army spit me out here but my as soon as i got out though in 2018 my uh my plan was to just go use my GA bill but right to school and that's what i did and i um ended up getting two degrees there but at the end of those i was like i want i don't know i just i want a little something more so i'm going back now again for a uh, higher level of education but um yeah that was my plan was just to stay active and um and focus on myself you know what i mean but uh I, I definitely can understand how a lot of guys can um go astray and like you said man but like we talked about like we have some friends a lot of friends with me at least over the last freaking almost decade who's committed suicide and i think with a podcast like this that we can um just put our stories out there. Let other people put the stories out there. Not like all the other podcasts, like where they have all these s badass seals or Delta force guys telling you how they killed bin Laden or something. You know I mean, we can get an opportunity. We will, we can use this platform as an opportunity to get some guys out here and on here and talk about their stories and tell about how, where they've been at more relatable. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're not all go ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. Just, talk about struggles in normal life. I mean, cause at the end of the day, 99% of us aren't going to have that special, you know, any, and even if you did have that special stuff happen or, or we're on like those outlier missions, that doesn't mean that like you're successful and you're running a fortune 500 company now, because it's just not how it works. No. And like me and you have talked, like, you know, you had some, medical struggles when you got out with the medications the va was telling you was good for you and then you found out they weren't you yeah. know I, and then like you know there's certain services out there that the va and the government provides for veterans some of them are good and some of them are bad so we were hoping to get some time you know when we're not interviewing people that were from battalion but also you know spend like every other episode talking about those services that helped us in the process and when we were etsing and stuff yeah 100 percent. i mean because there's like you said about those programs out there and there's a lot of organizations who say they're out for veterans and when you look at the numbers it doesn't add up you know they get so much government funding come in you compare that to how much work they actually do to the the veteran community that they say they are supposed to represent and be here for, you know, I definitely think that a lot of that data needs to be brought to the surface.
for people to look at and see. And I think this is a great platform to do it, you know, and that's just all that also helps guys that, um, out. Let me get somebody listens to this podcast and they were planning on using this organization. You know what I mean? Or what if they went out and use one of these wounded warrior foundation, um, for instance, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a dead end for them. But if we tell them not to go down that path before they do it, you know, it's just a lot of stress that they don't have to worry about um, encountering, you know? Um, and also, uh, we have a Discord server for this podcast and we're in a Facebook and a YouTube page. And all three, I'm posting links on different organizations or different um, statistics or different things that uh, Ken and I have verified or we'll vouch for that are good resources to help out um, veterans or soldiers in transition. But um, yeah. yeah, and we got and we got that phone number. We're trying to figure out how to establish some guys helping us where we can take calls. You know, because I I drive a semi truck, so ten hours of the day, like someone was struggling in a hard spot and they need to call somebody, they could they could call this number and we could talk. You know, talk them through you know, just different, different avenues of approach to try to help them in life. And so, cause a lot of times when you get out of battalion, all your friends are still in battalion. So it's like, you don't realize that till you're, you're gone, but like everybody else keeps going and you've now exited the system and you don't have like your whole network is gone. So it's hard. And, and, I, and I think that you and me, we both understand that. And a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys that are going to watch this, Guys that are still in battalion, they're not going to understand that. So if we can just just be in a spot to help guys, which we both were, you know, you know, yeah, you're a squad leader like it. So we, we we know what it's like to help people. So that, and that's all we want to do is we want to try to help people. We want to try to be there for people and help provide them with the easiest transition out of the military and into life that they can have. Yeah. And. On what you're saying about how when guys leave, the, their network is gone. And, and the way I look at that is, like we went with said soldiers, when I would go to schools, when anybody would go to school, like you never were going, like even if it was an NCOS school, you never were going just for yourself. You know, like you were going with the mindset that people are counting on me. I need to get this school done. I need to get this done. I need X, Y, Z, because it's just going to go back. Because, you know, when you go back, if you finish successfully and you get out of boys from your boys, you know what I mean? Like, good job, man. Or if you fuck up, you're going to know. You guys are like, hey, you messed up. This is how we're going to fix it, blah, blah, blah. But in the real world, it's not like that. Like, you can post on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. But even that, you're only posting what you want other people to see. And people are like, yeah, good job, man. But there's no real accountability there. It's like secondhand. So like, I think this could be a good platform where we can use each other as a support group and, or organization or whatever you want to call it. And you know what I mean? Just help each other um, find our network again. And um, maybe even a little bit more motivation, more motivation to get some stuff done. Well, that, and I, I think even in out, you know, cause the premise of the Rangers is get out, you know, make the big army, a better army, be a leader of battalion, go out to the big army and make the big army kind of abide by our standard. I think it should be the same thing when we go out into, you know, civilian society. Like that's what I do at work. You know, like guys put me in charge of stuff. There's a reason why, like they want me to represent them in cases. They want me to do this and that it's that objective standard, that approach that we have from battalion of trying to be a good leader and objectively take care of guys and like my buddy Stacy says all the time, you know, be fair, firm, and consistent. Like that's what he was always taught, you know, when he was a team leader in battalion and when he was in SF. That's the same approach we should take to civilian world. That guys should look to us as the leader still, because you know, Rangers do lead the way. Most of us went to Ranger school or a leadership school in the army that a lot of guys don't go to. Yeah, and and I think. The ranger mentality, the ranger spirit that we all held so high that we all try to reach, but we know none of us ever reached it. That that mentality of being like trying to always be the best and being an alpha and being, you know, yeah, I, I think it could deter like the double edged sword part. Like with me, I, I still wouldn't do it. 
like in school and stuff. I go to college and it's like, like, why are you guys so weak? You know what I mean? I'm just going, I'm just so like alpha and my presence is there. And I feel like people like, they're just weird. I just get weird reads from everybody. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, okay, like, is there something wrong? What's going on? It, it just didn't, that person, that range of personalities for me in my situation didn't really carry over too well. It doesn't carry over too well in the civilian world. And that's, I think that might be deterring for guys as well when they are trying to do stuff, you know, because, uh, I mean, I've talked to a few guys too afterwards who had hardcore ranger mentalities who got out who are not doing too well in life because that is one of the reasons why they um, lost their job because they thought they had the biggest, you know, balls in the room. But really, their mouth got them in trouble because they thought they were, you know, you know what I mean? Nothing could happen to them. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've had that problem at work several times, you know, like I've gotten written up because. <laughs> Apparently, like, you know, you can't you can't say certain things to your boss, which <laughs> like in the in the real world, like you kind of have to learn that. And and I've like I said, I, I have gotten in actual trouble at work and, and it was always like in a meaningful way where like I cared about the person. But like your boss doesn't want you to hear him, you know, tell him he's out of line. But but sometimes like that's how it is. And and that's kind of like that's just how it was when we were in battalion. It was like, if you were wrong, it didn't matter, you know, what your rank or position was like, you're wrong at the end of the day. And it's not like we're just creating a bunch of, you know, people that are like, you know, trying to raise up and cause problems. It's just when you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. I mean, I know exactly. It just, I mean, I, that's the ego. I mean, if you're bringing up something that's an issue, I mean, both you guys that are on the clock and you know your motivation should be to get the job done, you know? So yeah. like anything you say is like, this is for our main goal of getting the job done. Like, don't take it personal. <laughs> you know, we're all trying to make money and do the right thing. That's all right. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's definitely a uh, culture shock. And if you aren't ready for it, um, it's uh, going to hinder your progress, I think. Being able to um, just deal with people, like you said, being get written up and then having to deal with people's egos. And I don't know. I really haven't experienced that too much because I've been pretty much just going to school since I got out. So um, I don't know. That's why I wanted to be, want to be an engineer. That's what I'm studying now because I don't want to be I can't, I cannot picture myself going into a nine to five and having some other, some dude, some person, some girl, who knows who they are telling me anything. I don't know. I've freaking been to Iraq and Afghanistan. I've freaking saved people's lives. I've freaking seen some shit. I'm not going to have some fucking dude just tell me, I don't know. <laughs> it's maybe it's a chip on my shoulder, but I'm still getting paid for all the stuff I did. I mean, my pension, that's the way I look at it. Cause I sacrificed yeah. a lot. And all the money I get every month is for the hard work I did. I'm still getting paid for that. So, and that's a reminder of me that I'm not the same as this dude. Cause I can just freaking not work here and go home and still live off my pension. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think that's the chip on my shoulders. I know I don't need this job. I can just, but anyway, but that's why I want to be on top. I want to make sure, cause I know I'm efficient and I know I get you done the right way. And I know how that range of, that range of mentality. And I know when it's at the top, that pyramid is a successful pyramid that's underneath it. So that's why I want to be anyways. Yeah. I'm rambling on again, but yeah. So anyways, so that's, that's just yeah. kind of some uh, quick rundown of what we're thinking. So if you have any suggestions, then leave us a comment. And if, if you want to be on the podcast, you were in battalion or you were in some sort of SOCOM force and you feel like you have something to give that you want to talk about or you want to help others with let us know reach out to us and uh yeah we'll go from there and remember rangers lead the way